Hello there, welcome back. In this video we're going to be looking at updating item colours and item sizes. Now I apologise if the pace is fast, I'm going to go through this at a very fast pace, but that's only because it's actually quite easy, there's nothing difficult and you can handle this, okay? So let's go into the database and I'm going to make a new table up called store item colours. It's going to have three columns, okay? First column is going to be ID, it's an integer, auto increment uh, and a primary key. Next column is going to be item ID, that's an integer. Last column is colour, that's a variable character and we'll make it 120, okay? Uh, next I'm going to make another table up and I'm going to call it store item sizes, okay? That's going to have three columns, just like the last one. It's also going to have an ID, that's an auto increment primary key. We're going to have an item ID. Whoops. And then we're going to have a uh, size. Again, size will go with variable character 120, okay? So there you have it, we now have three tables on the database. Now I'm going to make a module up for dealing with store item colours. And then when that's working, I'm going to make another module up that deals with store item sizes. So let's head into our uh, folder, which is here. I'll just drag it into the picture. And we're going to create a brand new module like so. So we'll start with store item colours. Okay. And if we open up Sublime, you can see that we now have this store item colours here. I'm going to rename this store item colours. That's the controller. We're going to rename the class store item colours. And we're going to rename the model file that's being referenced. That obviously changes to store item colours. Okay, so that's that. Next, we're going to rename the model file. That's going to be MDL store item colours, like so. We're going to rename the class to store. Whoops, store item colours. Finally, we're going to change the table table name to store item colours. Okay, so that's our module ready, it's prepped, it is ready to go. Now, if we look at the page here, we want these buttons to go somewhere meaningful. At the moment, they're not doing anything. So I'm going to open up that create file from store items and I'm going to change this link so that it goes to store item colours, update, and then we'll go to uh, this page, we'll pass in the update ID like so, okay? And this one down here is going to go to store item sizes. Again, update, pass in the update ID. So now when we click this, it's taking us to that module for store item colours and the other one's doing the same for store item sizes. Now, before we go crazy with the update thing, let's ask ourselves, have we have we dealt with anything before that's kind of similar to this? Can we save some time? Can we get some consistency? I think the answer is yes. If we look at update image, it's kind of similar, you know? Same kind of idea, nice simple form. So I'm going to save some time by going to store items, okay? And I'm going to go to this update image thing here and I'm always looking for things that are similar because it's going to save time and it's going to keep things consistent. It's going to keep all of the spacing and everything consistent, okay? So update item colors is going to be the headline. The view file is going to be update. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, and that is pretty cool. You can see that we've even got some security here. Uh, obviously, the, the method itself will be update and that is us. So if we click here, everything looks just fine. Now we need to do an update file, okay? So I'm going to go into store item colors, into the views folder create a new file called update.php. Now update is going to contain a form, I'll do refresh, there's nothing much happening here, but it's going to uh, contain a form 
uh, basically that lets them add a new option. If we have a look at this create thing, you will see that we've actually built something like this before, something very similar. So I'm going to save some time and copy this, copy all of that and paste across. And now all I have to do is just simplify. So I'm going to take this stuff out here. We don't need that. And then I'm going to say new color option up the top here. Uh, the form can be really, really simplified, taking out all of that stuff. Uh, right here, I'm going to say new option and the form field is going to be called color, okay? We don't need value here. We really don't need that. So we're just simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. And I'm going to change this button here so that it says finished, right? And right along the top here, I'm going to say to uh, add a new option. Uh, actually, let's just uh, submit new option options as required. When you are finished adding new options, press finished. Okay, give them a little hand. So, uh, that's cool. Now, we definitely don't need this stuff here. Let's just have a little look. Let's hit refresh. And that looks pretty good. Submit new options as required. When you're finished adding new options, press finished. Uh, yep, that looks okay. I'm happy with that. So, what we need to do now is change the form location. The form location is going to be store item colors forward slash submit. Okay, and now it's just a case of building in the functionality for dealing with the submit. Okay, so we're just going to do that. We'll add in some security again, like so. Okay, and we know that submit equals this input post submit true. Okay. And we also know that we've got this field called color that has been submitted. Uh, here it's here. Okay. Now I'm going to trim color for reasons which will become clear in just a moment. And I'm going to say that if submit is equivalent to finished, then redirect to store items create update ID. Okay. Um, otherwise, let's do an else if here. If submit is equivalent to submit, then uh, we're going to attempt attempt an insert. Okay. A database insert. Okay. So I'm going to say if color does not equal that, then data item ID equals update ID data color equals color and the insert is as easy as that. The reason why I have this in an if statement is because I don't want somebody doing that and pressing submit, you see. Uh, that's going to safeguard us against that stuff. Now, if all is well, then we're going to add some flash data here. Uh, let me just see. We'll copy that from somewhere where we've used this in the past. And here we go. That looks good. I'm just borrowing code that I've used previously. Okay, just saving time. Always saving time. Always cutting corners. And I'm going to say the new color option was successfully added. Okay, so we add the flash data and finally we redirect to store item colors, uh, update and update ID lowercase s here. Okay, so that's that. So if they are finished, they press finished like this. And if they submit, they just say something like red. New color was successfully added, blue, new color was added. And if you have a look here, you'll see that it's adding the options, okay? 
the next thing I'm going to do is underneath here, I'm going to display the existing color options. It's going to be a table showing you the, the options that we already have for this item. Now, if you have a look at store items, manage, you'll see that we have a nice table here. It looks kind of cool. Um, it's not perfect because I've just noticed it has a little wrench here, but it looks good and I'm going to use that, okay? So let's open up this manage file here. I'm going to delete this silly little wrench because we don't need that. But apart from the wrench thing, this is not too bad. So I'm going to add this in here and I'm going to paste it right here. This is the existing color options, okay? Existing color options. And instead of a tag here, we'll have, uh, let's have that edit thing again here, okay? So here we go. Uh, update item colors and it's trying to draw the table but it's running into some errors, okay? So we need to fetch the existing color options. I'm going to do that just now. Fetch existing options for this item, okay? Now I'm going to open up MDL store item colors and you see where this says get where custom here? I'm going to add a little order by in here. It's going to come in handy. And I'm going to order the results by color. I want things to be alphabetical, you know. And uh, what we're going to say is query equals this get where, oh gee, get where custom, get where what, get where item ID equals update ID, okay. And then I'm going to say num rows equals query num rows, okay? Now, if num rows is greater than, actually, do you know what I'll do? Sorry. Let's just say, uh, let's speed things up a bit, in fact. Let's say data query equals that, okay? And the num rows equals the number of rows returned from data query. Right, good. So now what we do is we go in here where we've got the existing options and we're going to put this inside an if statement. We're going to say if num rows is greater than zero, then we display the existing options. Okay? Like so. Uh, and then we're just going to tidy this up. So I'm going to say count uh, and I'm going to say uh, color and then the last one I'll say action and then I'm going to simplify here. We'll add in a little counter, right? So we'll add a counter here set to zero. That's good. Uh, the first row is going to say count. The next row is going to say color. And the last row, we'll just, we don't need this here. The last row is going to have our uh, option for actually deleting the existing color option. So if we hit refresh, uh, we've got this thing here that we don't need. Thank you very much. We'll take that out. Okay, that's cool. So these things here, this is just buttons. There's nothing fancy here, you know? So I'm going to just change this so that it's a red button. I'm going to give it a little, uh, let me just see, white. Let's change this to a trash icon like that, okay? And then in here, I'm just going to say remove option. Okay, and that's pretty good. Uh, you may say that the table's a bit wide, but I actually like these wide tables because when someone views on an iPad or something, it, it scales down very gracefully, you know? As you can see, everything looks fantastic, so it doesn't bother me that the table's wide, you know? So all we need to do now is get the delete URL sorted. The delete URL is base URL. Um, store item colors delete uh, that's going to be row ID and then in here we're just going to add in the delete URL 
Okay, so now we just do the delete like so. Taking in the update ID. Once again, no harm in doing some security. And before we do anything, we need to uh, fetch the item ID. Query equals this, get where, update ID. For each query, loading up, oh gee, sorry, loading up result as row. Item ID equals row item ID. Now, why did I fetch the item ID? The answer is because after we've done the delete, right, after we've deleted here, we're going to redirect to store item colors, update, and then the item ID. That's why we fetched the item ID. Okay. Oh, gee, what's just happened? I think I think we almost broke Sublime there. I'll try and finish this if I can. Uh, that's kind of worrying. Anyway, hopefully things will hold together here. I'll just add in some flash data. And I'll say the option was successfully deleted. Okay. So, uh, let's just test that. I'm going to hit refresh. Let's remove option. Let's remove option again. Good. That's excellent. Red. There we go. And when we're finished, we click finished. So, that is not too bad. Uh, I'm actually very, very happy with that. So, to do the same with store item colors, all we have to do is duplicate and then rename is store item sizes. Uh, then it's just a little bit of renaming. Just a little bit of renaming. And everything will be cool. So we'll rename this file so that it's called uh, store item sizes. We'll rename this file so that it's called MDL store item sizes. That's good. And now I'm just going to do some search and replace. So I'm going to search for color and replace with size. Notice that this is case sensitive. So here we go. I'm going to replace and I'm going to save and close. Okay, save and close. I'm going to do that once more. This time we'll use an uppercase C. Remember, this is case sensitive, very important. And an uppercase S, replace. Here we go again, save and close, save and close, save and close, and that should be it. If we now go and have a look at this page here, we can update the item sizes, large, you can see I've practiced this, small, okay, uh, medium, that's the store item sizes, it works exactly the same, and you can also see that the store item colors is as cool as can be as well. So that's item colors and item sizes done. I'll see you in the next video.